Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you? You know, I I've been worse. You know, some sometimes you got to use the back door, and uh, that's okay. Phrasing, phrasing Jared. Well, phrasing. it's too early. It's too early in the show for that, Kyle. It's too early in the show for that. <laughs> but what it's not too early in the show for, Kyle, is a celebration bourbon. Celebration bourbon. There we go. There we go. All right. I am drinking OYO out of out of Columbus, Ohio. I don't think it's it's not technically a bourbon, but it's still a barrel aged whiskey. So I'm going to take it. Um, and if y'all want to sponsor us, just let us know. If anyone at OYO is listening, I like, I like. Of course, there it's actually uh, Midwest distilleries is that correct that's the actual company behind it anyway if anyone works there let us know if anyone knows anyone that works there let us know we yeah, we so, would so love we would love a sponsor uh and some free and, and some free whiskey yeah sometimes jared <laughs> sometimes it's 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 better to be lucky here and uh, yeah you sometimes know, you, you'll take it you'll take it here uh yeah it always it all started friday jared when uh, people all the way out in California heard heard celebration cries all the way from Ohio Friday yeah. night. Yeah, Man, what what a what a game from Utah there! What a game! Uh yeah, it. We watched that as a po- as a part of the social screen. Uh, that was our that was our weekly social screen. By the way, first time we ever did it on a Friday night. Um, and I, I said this and I think everyone kind of had a realization and I said this towards the end of the game, I go, this is the Ohio state Michigan game, except we're cheering, you know, except it's turning out the way we want it to. Cause it felt a lot like that. It was a very close game for a lot of the game. And then Utah got the edge and then just sort of poured it on late. Um, the, you know, the score is a little deceiving, much like the Ohio state Michigan game score was a little deceiving. Um, it started Saturday when I wrapped up the big win. I am your champion. I'm uh, what, what I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you came in third. If you're talking about the sloop picks, cousin Jay won the sloop picks. Nomad came in second. You didn't even, you didn't even like you got the bronze, which is nice. You did, but you beat me. Not in this room. Yes. Who won the overall, though? Between you and me. Uh, Last night, I thought we tied. Did we tie? We did tie. Yes. Yes. (laughs) All right. Tiebreaker will be the bowl prediction uh, special, which is next Monday. Kyle and I will be previewing. It was a tie again. You'll probably tie on those two. It's possible. That doesn't make us losers. That makes us tires, Austin. Come on. Get your get your nomenclature correct. All right, Kyle. Let's let's up. Let's let's stop burying the lead here. Ohio State. Ohio State. In the playoff. I not a surprise. As USC lost, and to me, anything past that was icing on the cake. Um, in my opinion. And the committee will never admit to this. So I don't want to hear anyone say, well, you know, uh, the the committee chairman in the interview said, uh, I don't care. What he says is irrelevant to me. He is he is under no obligation to tell us the truth. Much like the he's not the doctor, but much like the doctor, he he lies. And that is rule one. Yeah, he is under no obligation to tell the truth. He has to give a soundbite explanation for what could have been dozens of minutes, an hour of conversation, probably not an hour just between Ohio state and TCU, you know, who gets three, who gets four. But in my opinion, they put Ohio state at four strictly to avoid the rematch with Michigan. And I mean, yeah, it definitely appears that way, Jared. But 
how I look at it. I mean, TCU lost by three points. Yeah, there's a case to be made. Yeah, so I, I think they I think lost three points to a to a, a in overtime. Team. In overtime. in overtime to a, to a good team here in, in a extra game here in a conference championship game, I don't think they should have been penalized and, and they didn't. And so against yeah. a team that they had beat earlier in the season. Yeah. So I, think, I, no, I get it. I totally get it. But the commit, okay. The committee had favored Ohio state over TCU basically all season up until Ohio state lost. What changed? Both teams are one loss, non-conference champions. I be, yeah. Ultimately, like, it is. I mean, it, it matters. Is, yeah. It does. I don't. I was about to say it doesn't matter because it does. It matters. It matters who you play. Um, bad loss versus not bad loss. By the way, the committee person did actually point yeah. out that they didn't consider the Ohio State loss to be a bad loss. They knew it was a one score game with X number of minutes left. And then, you know, then, you know, things got a little crazy at the end. Um, so they acknowledged that it wasn't as bad of a loss as the score would indicate. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, that loss to, uh, with USC, what was that? That was a 23, yeah, 23 point loss for USC here. I don't think matter if USC lost by three or 23. No. A loss for USC would have dropped them out no matter what. A loss for USC equal to playoff berth for Ohio State, period. Yep. Nothing else from that point mattered. I said that. I said that very like nothing else, nothing today affects the playoffs. Nothing today affects the playoffs. Even TCU losing didn't dis didn't drop them a spot. TCU would destroy us. I think not, Zach. I think not. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know the, but the fact of the matter is Utah did lose. TCU did lose. Had TCU lost worse. Could that have opened things up for Bama? No, no, no. Yeah. I don't know why all Be, because past, ESPN past couple of games, they, they're really amping up about, Oh, maybe Alabama should have a chance. Who the hell did they beat? Their resume was not that good. The teams that they had a chance to improve their resumes, they'd lost to. So, no, th this thing about, oh, Alabama had a chance here. No, it wasn't. Jerry and I talked about this for a um, couple of times before, before today, just saying that there's no chance for Alabama to get in, period. Yeah, but why? Because ESPN had to manufacture drama. And it was uh, Jared is a searchable gif. Yes, I am. It was shitty drama. Well, but that's ESPN pays a lot of money to have these bowl selections. And this is the only bowl selection that matters. So what are they going to do? Are they going to be like, well, everyone, we know we know who's making the playoffs. And then just say, well, watch our show anyway. No, they had to manufacture something. So they manufactured, could Bama get in? Could Bama get in? When Reese Davis himself said last Tuesday that no matter what happens, Bama is out. He said it. And then he turns around and he starts hyping up Bama. Why? Because he has to. That's his job. He has to make sure that, <laughs> excuse me, people watch the show. Which is fine. ESPN's a business. They have bills to pay. They have a board to appease to. They have stockholders to appease to. Whatever. It is what it is. But that's yeah. what ESPN had to do to make sure people actually watched. To convince Ohio State fans and to convince TCU fans, you absolutely need to watch. Nice shirt, Jared. Thank you. You can buy your own at merch.thesloopcast.com. I like our chances against Stenson and not Max. I, I mean, I'd rather play TCU. That I don't think that, that yeah. it's some sort of insane amount of chaos would have happened. Um, so some sort of insane amount of chaos would have happened to try and make that possible. Um, I don't even want to go through the, uh, 
what it would have taken to have done that. Nomad says nice hat, by the way, Kyle. Thank you. Um, you could not buy that at merch.thesloopcast.com because that's officially licensed material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can, however, buy Kyle's hoodie. Kyle, show up the hoodie yeah. at merch.thesloopcast.com. Boom. Masters. Masters. Read my name. Right. No. No, I'm not going to read your name, Kirby Smart's butt cheeks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I Utah, want Kyle's hoodie. You can buy it. You can. All right. Mentioned Utah beating USC. Um, we had Kansas State beating TCU. Uh, Michigan beating Purdue 43-22 in a, in a very typical Michigan um, way where they struggled in the first half and then just find that somehow find some offense in the second half here. It's what Michigan does. It's just what they do. They did it all year. They, they play literally any team to a tie or close to a tie in the first half. And then they wear you out. That's what they do. They just wear you down. They wear you out. That's, that's who they are. That's what they do. Mm. Uh, let's see the other game here of, of, of importance. Well, I, I guess this other one is too. Uh, Tulane beating UCF to get that number one uh, group of five bid. Yeah. Uh, which to which Tulane will be playing. I won't say the bold name, Jared, because that's going to be for a, uh, <laughs> I'll be for uh, next week's episode. Uh, they will be playing USC with a possible Caleb less USC offense. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, sorry, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to do this thing again. It doesn't matter if you're not if you're not in the top four. It doesn't matter. There is this big sort of talking. Is CJ Stroud going to play if Ohio State doesn't make the playoffs? No, and he shouldn't. I'll say it, but they are. So who cares? Should Caleb Williams play in Okay, what, what what bowl is Utah going to? Or I mean, what USC is going to? Not not going to say, Jared, because we're saving that for uh, Monday's episode. Cotton, Nomad told me it was the cotton. I know you Shh. with with the ones like the Cotton Bowl, Kyle. You're going to have to try and trick me on the sponsors. You you can't be like, oh, is it the Cotton Bowl or is it the Polyester Bowl? I'm going to know it's the Cotton Bowl. You're going to have to try and screw me up on the sponsors on those. By the way, uh, for those of you who've never listened to one of our bowl previews before, what we're going to do next Monday, we're going to choose who we think is going to win all the bowl games. We're going to assign a confidence score to it. And Kyle's going to uh, test me all, on uh, what the names of the bowls are. All 40 bowl games. All 40. And then the 41st one we will do at a, another time. Yes, sir. Um, and the. You can actually join and pick along with us. You can do the confidence along with us. Um, if you're in the Discord server, it's in the announcements page. Actually, Kyle, you made a whole new channel for it, didn't you? Uh, your voice did not come through right there for some reason, but he said, yes, I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, can't wait for the chimichanga bowl. I would, I would love nothing more than a chimichanga bowl. It did come through to us. Well, it didn't to me, therefore it didn't to the recording. All right, and the, and the other game here, uh, let's see, Clemson beats North Carolina. Did, that game did not matter. Uh, and Georgia uh, beat LSU 50 to 30. Yeah. The SEC championship game. Yes, yeah. And Toledo, yeah, and Toledo did win. Toledo yeah. won the MAC, unfortunately. Go Bobcats. Yeah. Um, the. <laughs> uh, Clemson wins, which, Kyle, I'm not going to lie. Um, I didn't know that until this morning. That's how little I cared. I was like, oh, look, Clemson won. San Diego State still winning. Did San Diego State. Did they play? What are you talking about? South Dakota. South Dakota State. My bad. My bad. I don't. I mean, we don't have any. Uh, we don't have any <laughs> FCS guys in the show notes. Sorry. Do you know why Clemson looked pretty good in the, in the, um, in their ACC championship game? Because no one was watching. That's when they played because their best. DJ was not their main quarterback in that game. 
Oh, really? Did they finally bench him? Uh, they used freshman Cade Klobink. Probably should have done that a long time ago, huh? They should have. Yeah. Clubnik, Austin says. Clubnik. What did I say? Uh, not, sure not, I not Clubnik. Austin. You no, you didn't. Pretty sure I said that. You Jared didn't go wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. All right. Um, By the way, just I'm just going to toss this out there. If you think that DJ Uyunglele is going to come to Ohio State next year and start, you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, just just throwing that out there. Just leave it there, Jared. It's I, not, I, it's I, that's not that's all, all right. I got. That's all I got. All right. Hands up. Go on. No, I said what I needed to say. All right. Um, got, got a couple questions here real quick, Jared. You were talking? Uh, oh, yeah, got okay. A got a question here uh, related to related to uh, upcoming games here. Um, why should we, meaning Ohio State, uh, study Kent State and Missouri? And why is our loss against Teton of utter importance now that we face Georgia? Um, study Kent State and Missouri. I, I honestly don't have the answer to that question. Um, I guess I didn't watch enough Kent State and Missouri this year to know, uh, to know what is, is that Zach that said that? Georgia struggled with both. Oh, yes. Gotcha. No. No. They Georgia struggled with Kent State and Missouri because they were Kent State and Missouri. Because they just didn't. You, it's impossible. Everyone wants all of these players to treat every single game like it's the biggest game they've ever played in because that's really easy to say, but really hard to do. Uh, Ty just posted DJU is going to the transfer portal. Good for him. And I, and Hey, if he wants to come to Ohio state, good for him. He's not beating Kyle McCord. I'll, he's not beating Kyle McCord. I've seen enough of Kyle McCord to know that. And I've seen enough of DJ who to know that that ain't happening. You mean Devin Brown, but okay. Whoever. Listen, sometimes Ohio State needs another Jagger LaRue. And if that's what DJ Ungalale wants to do, he's more than welcome to do it. Devin Brown will start. Now, my money's on McCord, but we have a whole offseason to talk about that. Um, and why is uh, our loss at Tidon in utter importance now that we face Georgia? That's the important question. DJ to Wisconsin, that makes sense because um blanking on his name, someone help me. Mertz got there. I got there. Uh M Mertz is uh also in the transfer portal, which is probably good for everybody. I think Graham Mertz is an incredibly talented quarterback, and uh Wisconsin ruined him. That's my opinion on the matter. Um DJ you to Wisconsin feels right. I agree. I, I, yeah, I, I think Stewart knocked that one out of the park. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, okay. Sorry. Right, so, Why? So, so, sorry. I need to, I need to, I need to put my, I need to put my focus hat back on for a second. I'm on some new medication and it's not as good as my Adderall. I apologize. Uh, lost, uh, uh why is the loss to Tito and better importance, uh, as we face Georgia? Very simply, very simply, because Georgia is just a better Michigan. And it's not even me trying to insult Michigan, who I th I've been on the record saying for a long time is a very good football team. But Georgia's just them, but better. Better running backs. I said it. A better defense. And a better defense where it'll hurt Ohio State because better they have tight. better corners, better tight ends, better defensive tackles. 
man, we got all month to talk about Ohio State versus Georgia, but y'all, we aren't winning the interior of the line. The interior of Ohio State's offensive line has shown me nothing this year to tell me that they are going to compete against the monstrous, monstrous, that's not a word, defensive tackles of Georgia. You aren't going to be... Vegas thinks otherwise, Jared. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not mischaracterize what I am saying. Ohio State can win the game. Ohio State can win the game. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that you're not going to be running between the tackles with a ton of success. That's what I'm saying. Ohio State can win this game, but they're going to have to win this game strictly on the shoulder of... CJ Stroud and the wide receivers and just pray to God JSN comes back. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, I think George is definitely um, susceptible on the, the passing attack there and throw the damn ball Ohio state. Ohio state needs to just reverse what they've been trying to do. They need to pass to open up the run game here. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Oh, but yeah. Ohio State and Georgia. Uh, Georgia opened up as a seven-point uh, favorite in this game uh, down in Atlanta. I saw so, six and yes, a half I personally. Po- I saw someone posted a uh, a uh, Sherman uh, gif in there. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. Guys, here. guys, <laughs> it's time to burn down Atlanta again. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That, by the way, is simply a historical reference and not a call to action. Do not oh, sue you me. Are you Austin? Are you Austin? You'll be there? That's awesome. Do you need gasoline for your car? For your car? <laughs> no, seriously, for your car. <laughs> he was hey, sweating um... today. Yeah, Austin was the one person hoping that Ohio State was going to play Georgia just because he already bought tickets for the game in Atlanta. <laughs> So look, looking at the rest of the uh, rest of the rankings here, Jared, I, don't, I know you're. I know I can already read your mind, Jared. I can already read read your mind, and it doesn't matter. The rest of the rankings don't matter. They, I mean, they do. They don't, but they do. Uh Penn State. Penn mm-hmm. State uh, still there at eleven. Actually, they. I think they dropped. Yeah, I thought they were two. eleven. Weren't they 11 a couple weeks ago? I, uh, yeah, but they were, then I think they were like moved up. Yeah, I think they were ninth. And then, yeah, they were ninth because Utah, Kansas State jumped, jumped ahead of them. Yeah. Yep. I was surprised to see Clemson for how dominant they looked as a conference champion. And, and same thing with Utah. Same thing with Utah. Dominance in a conference champion didn't go up past um, two loss um, non-champion Alabama and Tennessee. Just saying. Um, because Clemson didn't play nobody, Paul. That's that's it. Okay, okay, that one's true. But what about Utah? Utah, who absolutely smashed USC. Yeah, I, I think I think they deserved a little bit more love. All right, Kyle, this this is this is the portion where I say, yeah, but it, it who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Who's um man, man, how how bad how bad has the Big Ten gotten here, Jared? How bad? Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. You okay, can't okay, say okay, how okay, bad is me, the Big let Ten let me, let me, in let the first finish. year Jared, that Jared, someone me, other than the no, let me finish my sentence. That let someone me, let other let than the SEC this, I'm gonna rephrase here. How how from top to bottom, how bad the Big Ten is when you only have three Big Ten teams ranked in the top 25. Three of, but those three are in the top 11. <laughs> three Two of, the of them are in the playoffs. The six. <laughs> there has never been a conference other than the SEC to send two teams to the playoff. Yeah, no, and, and that's fantastic. And, and I'm, I'm, now, Kyle, I'm, I'm, redo I'm, that I'm, equation. Redo that equation for me with USC and UCLA included. I'm I'm somewhat 
Um, happy to see that two teams from the Big Ten are in. Are in. I'm, I'm glad half of them is, have that. Te- uh, half of those teams is Ohio State. Not, not so happy about the other half. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I think I think overall, four in the top eleven, five in the top twenty, if you count USC and UCLA, and like you know, we're just waiting on the divorce to go final there, right? Like we're already living with USC. We're all UCLA. We're splitting bills with, we're just waiting for the divorce to be finalized at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Like I'm counting USC and UCLA. Try and stop me. And if the SEC wants to count Texas and Oklahoma, get right ahead. Count, count Oklahoma. I dare you. I see, I see a couple of people here and yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to not uh, think about it. Ohio state ranked fourth against an unstoppable sec power in the first Mm -hmm. round. And they go down and play in a bowl game in the South. Yeah. I mean, all the bowl games are in the South, but proceed. I mean, except for, except for the one in California. And the one that's up in uh, New York. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the playoff. Balls. Oh, yes. Yes. They're all in the South. And by the way, it, Pasadena is still, where is Pasadena? It's California. Northern. Yeah, I know it's California is both the South and not the South. Cause it's a huge state is my point. I actually, yeah, I mean, huh? No, Pasadena is kind of, it's. Pasadena it's LA. is it's, Northern it's, LA, which is yeah, still the LA. South. Now, I mean, no one actually considers Los Angeles to be the South for many reasons. So it's coastal. Let's just say that one's coastal. All the bowl games are still in the South. All of the bowl games are in the South. Yeah, you can pretty much just draw a line. Right we have another player in the transfer portal of note, according. To, I don't feel like Stuart would have dropped this in here for just anybody. Oh, look at this. I posted that. I posted that. Oh, my fault. I didn't see it. Deshaun McCullough. Sean McCullough. Yeah, one time, one time Ohio State commit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did. Kyle, you guys, let's not fight over it. Uh, you're Future right. Ohio State I Buckeye. Of somebody else. I, I I'd like to think so too, Austin. We have spots open at linebacker this year. We do. I think Ohio, this will be Ohio State's. Really think this will be Ohio State's biggest year in the transfer portal. Um, I think you have a very real possibility. I don't think Steele leaves. I, I I do think you have a very real possibility that Tommy Pickles leaves. Um. There's lots of good corners in the portal. There's lots of good offensive tackles in the por- in the portal. Ohio State needs both depth and, quite frankly, a starter or two at those positions. Um, Oklahoma State. I don't have to tell you about the Oklahoma State connection. You're not listening to this podcast and don't know the Oklahoma State connection. Uh, their best linebacker, not just a linebacker, but this is for the offseason, Jared. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, the OK State kid might get plucked. Yeah, I will miss Steele like a son. Do you think uh, is is Steele done? I can't keep track of eligibility because of COVID year. I think he has another year, doesn't he? I don't think he's going to leave early. Steele is eligible to go. Yes, yes. But he, you think he's going? OK, we'll find out. I, I, I don't want to get into a debate over it. Point is, is that between McCullough and the Oklahoma State kid who just entered the portal, Ohio State might be bringing in both of those guys. Denver Harris is in the portal, uh, a name that those of you who follow recruiting, Ohio State recruiting, know very well is in the portal. Um, Ohio, This might be Ohio State's busiest year in the portal ever, which, okay, doesn't say a lot. The portal's not that old, but still. And I, I still think they really need to add an offensive tackle in the portal, and there's some good ones out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the rest of the time here, Jared, I want to get alert. To, yeah. 
w- wanted to go back and just talk about the upcoming game here for Ohio State and Georgia. Now, one, one of the things that Ohio State really had issues with, especially uh, it seemed like for a lot of the season, but definitely noticed it towards the end, is staying healthy. Had a lot of people injured. Had a lot of people that are out. You get a you get a good month to recover. You get a good month to get get players healthy, ready for the bowl game here. I, I feel that I feel that nobody, in, including Georgia, Jared. I feel that nobody wants to play Ohio State right now. You, you get if you get a healthy Ohio State team, where you see the the play calling that Ohio State has done, especially in the beginning of the year. This team can be can be anybody can be anybody here, and I feel I feel yeah. that I feel that if we get the key players healthy, which is important, I. I would, I would take, I would definitely take, uh, um, the points here. Oh against yeah, Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you. I get a chance to take Ohio State as an underdog. I'm, I'm taking that. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm taking any opportunity at all to take Ohio State with points. I don't give a fuck who they're playing. Ohio State's an underdog. I'm taking that bet. How often do you actually get to pick Ohio State as an underdog? Not very often. I'm trying to think of the last time Ohio State was an underdog. Um, probably I, I the last time State, they were in the playoff. Yeah, it was the championship game in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, that, that game was stupid and an anomaly and i refuse to acknowledge its existence uh ohio state yeah we've talked about that in the past we don't need to go there again um will we see john cooper or will we see nick saban oh will we see john cooper day or nick saban day on new year's eve um well he's not playing michigan so you got that going. You got that going for you. Uh, John Cooper could beat anyone except Michigan. So I don't think you're even going to get your answer there. Yeah. W- when it comes to Ohio State and Georgia, they're just going to need to pass the damn ball. It's just that simple. You're not going to get you're not going to get rushing yards. If you can somehow in a miracle get JSN back, that would be enormous. So now you have JSN and Marvin Harrison Jr. on the field. So who are you going to double at that point? Who are you going to double now? It would just be enormous. It would be enormous. And quite frankly, and I have been. Yeah, you can't you can't do both. You can't do both. Um, Like when you still have a Mecca Buka on the field, you can't you can't do both. And this is going to be a game. Yeah, Omeka is a little decent. Um, This is a game in which you're going to have to let CJ Stroud run for yards, period. And I am the biggest defender of Day's choice to not let CJ Stroud run more often. I I really am. I'm the biggest defender of that. Because, like, Enough people were watching USC and watching Williams run all over the field and getting CC. Why can't why why can't CJ Stroud do that? Then Williams got hurt. Then what? Oh, look at Duggan. Duggan's making all these plays. Duggan's making all these plays, and he can barely walk at the end. They were like, "Hey, why didn't they just run a? Why didn't they just run Duggan at the end in overtime?" And by the way, they still should have, but the dude had nothing left. And they still they still should have. It's a sneak. You don't need much left to run a sneak. Don't get me wrong. But like you saw the condition Duggan was in at the end of that game. You saw the condition that Caleb Williams was in at the end of that game. And Kyle already told you at the beginning of the show that Caleb Williams is probably not going to play in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. Why not run the quarterback more? That's why. That yeah, there you go. You 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 want an interesting stat? Well, I guess. But against Georgia, they're gonna have to do it. 
I, th- I think a lot of they're going to have to run CJ Stroud against Georgia for the record. It's going to have to happen. You're not going to have a running. You're not going to have a great running game unless you introduce CJ Stroud as a running threat. Agreed. Um, probably to no, nobody, um, nobody, um, really. Oh, here, I'll, I'll just post it here, Jared to no surprise here, Jared TCU is the first is the first team in the state of Texas to make the college football playoff. Wow. <laughs> what a shot across the bow of, of both Austin, not, not you, Austin, the city of Austin, of both Austin and college station. Wow. And Baylor. Ah, eh, fuck Baylor. Yeah. Um, what is sh- tech and you fuck it, fuck Texas Tech. Um, yeah, what a shot across the bow of TCU to be the first team in Texas. And by the way, the first team in Texas after eight years of playoffs, in the eighth year of the playoffs, only one Texas team has made it. And it's not the one that we thought it would have been. I honestly, they're the only one that ever got close. Baylor kind of got close, but I would have, t- but TCU would have gotten in over Baylor anyway, even if it wasn't Ohio state, it would have been TCU. I mean, wasn't, wasn't there some sort of analyst that had a Texas team in, in his uh, top four? I'm sure everyone always wants to say Texas is back right up until. <laughs> what? We we do not know, or are we not acknowledging someone? I not, I didn't mention anybody. I just I I just said a certain someone. That's all. Was That's it Desmond? We, was it Desmond Howard? Know. Was it Desmond Howard? What was right. Desmond Howard's final four? Because oh, I know gosh. Pitt was in there. Pitt was in there too. Was it, were they not? They were. Come on, what was it? Come on, look it up, Kyle. Look it up. We're having fun today. This is a celebration. Ohio State's in the playoff. They have a chance to get healthy. They have a chance to redeem themselves. If you're not celebrating today, if you're thinking, listen, if you spent all week, if you spent, Kyle, let me, Kyle, I'm on a rant. Let me go. If you spent all week, if you spent all week being like, Ohio State didn't have any fight in them. Ohio State was playing not to lose. Ohio State didn't have any passion. Ohio State didn't care. And you're now saying, I don't know if I want to play Georgia. Go fuck yourself. Take take a look in that mirror. If you're saying, well, Ohio State doesn't even deserve to go. I don't even want to go. Take a look in the mirror and decide. Ask yourself, who doesn't have fight now? Don't deserve to be in. Georgia's going to roll us. Georgia's so much better. Who doesn't have fight in them now? Who's a quitter now? Who doesn't want it bad enough now? If you're sitting there doubting Ohio State, and by the way, Ohio State's more likely to lose than they are win. I'll say it. I mean, Vegas said it. They're a six and a half point dog right now. If this was a best of seven NBA series, Georgia wins, but it's not. It's one fucking game. It's one fucking game. And if you're thinking to yourself, if you've been saying, oh, I say this doesn't deserve to be in. I don't even want to go to the playoffs. We're just going to get embarrassed. And you were just a week ago, just a week ago, saying to yourself, Ohio State didn't want it bad enough. Ohio State didn't show up ready. Ohio State didn't. Ohio State didn't. You don't. You feel better, Jared? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the fourth team. Kyle, the we've gotten really behind on posting things like our shorts and our highlights. We we that we might need to clip that one. The fourth team, Jared, is Baylor. The fourth team. What are we talking about? Question before you went on your rant. I don't remember what question I asked you. <laughs> there you go, Jared. Oh, okay. Here is Desmond Howard's. I I can't get that big on our screen. Uh, Texas A&M, Pittsburgh, Baylor and Michigan. Well, one out of four ain't bad is not what that meatloaf song was. 
One out of four is actually fucking terrible. It's actually fucking, especially considering Texas A&M doesn't have a winning record. It isn't that he got one out of four. It's who they are. Exactly. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Because picking the final four is theoretically tough. I think anyone could have gotten two out of four. Anyone could have picked Georgia. Anyone could have picked Michigan or Ohio State. Anyone could have done that. And not a lot of people would have put Ohio State and Michigan both in. Not a lot of people would have put TCU in. A respectable analyst. And by the way, I know Kyle and I both had Ohio State and Georgia in. I don't remember what our final four picks were, Kyle, but I know we both had Georgia in and we both had Ohio State in. I, 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 I doubted Michigan. I, I know I had USC in and I think I may have had Bama in. I think was that my final four? It may have been Georgia, Bama, Ohio State and uh, USC, I believe was my final four. But I could be wrong. Texas? No, I never picked Texas. No, no chance in hell I picked Texas. It definitely wasn't Texas. Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. No. Zero chance I would have picked Texas. I had Notre Dame, Ohio State, Bama, and Georgia. And by the way, he picked Clemson. Who picked Clemson? I didn't pick Clemson. Did I? You? I did? Maybe I did. I'm, I won't say that that was outside of the realm of possibilities that I picked Clemson. Point is, is that even if I picked, I know I picked USC and let's say I did pick Clemson. USC number 10, Clemson number seven. Those aren't bad picks. I almost picked Notre Dame. They finished 21st. Even if I had picked Texas, I didn't. They finished 20th. These aren't bad picks. Where the hell did Texas A&M, Pittsburgh, and Baylor end their seasons? I tell you this much, they aren't ranked. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly who, who I picked. Is it in our show? Uh, don't, don't look it up. It's not worth it. It's I, not worth it. I, I, want, I want to say, and, and I might be, I might be totally wrong here, but Maybe I might have had um, USC, maybe. I had a feeling maybe I had USC. I know for a fact I had USC because I did a whole thing. Oh, no, where, no, Matt, I did not. No, he absolutely did not pick NC State. I would have given him shit all year if he picked NC State at the beginning of the year. All year I would have done that. I promise you. I would have never stopped giving him shit if he did that. Believe me. Believe me. Duke, yeah, he picked Duke. Uh, correct final four, wrong sport. Just remember, General Sherman was from Columbus, Ohio. You goddamn right he was. You're goddamn right. I mean, he was from Ohio anyway. I don't was he was he from Columbus? I want to say he was from a small town. He was from Columbus? Okay. That's William Tecumseh Sherman to you. Once again, you're goddamn right. That is, actually, no, Nomad, that is General William Tecumseh Sherman to you. He was from outside Columbus. Yeah, and most people aren't from Columbus, Columbus. I am, but most people are from the suburbs. All right, Kyle. Um. Tulane at 16. Kyle, let's play a quick game. I want to play a quick game. Okay. Central Ohio is good enough. We don't got to, we don't got to right. draw borders kind on of game, that. Jared. Kind of game. Let's figure out the 12 team playoffs coming. Okay. Would that have been fun? Would you have preferred that this year? You would have had Georgia. Michigan, TCU, Ohio State, Alabama would have made it. 
Tennessee would have made it. Clemson would have made it. Utah would have made it. Kansas State would have made it. That's we're up to nine. Um, Tulane would have made it. So it's not exactly the top eleven. So how how this would have worked, Jared? So one through four had a bye week. Correct. Ohio That's State, Michigan, TCU. Basically, it's the old NFL system. Your yep, your right. top four seeds so get a bye week. So your matchups would be Washington versus Alabama. Not uh, hold on, Nomad. Are you sure? He is trying to tell us that. I don't think the fact that you're a conference champion affects the seeding. Is he right? No. No, no, it doesn't. Hold on. Not. Hold on. Let's. Top four conference champions. Conference champions does. Well, then I'm right. I'm missing up there. Hell no. Really? Well, if that's what the rules say. Kyle, do we need to look it up? Look, so, up, uh, look uh, it up, Kyle. Look it up. Here, here's, the, here's the thing it's top six are. Top six are auto bids. Yes. The top six conference champions go to the playoffs, period, which is why Tulane would have been in. Um, that That is absolutely true. Um, Kyle and I, I think, are both looking it up right now, so we'll just see who can get to it the quickest. Okay, someone actually made the bracket for us. Um, I'm going to credit uh, Yahoo Sports. Um, it would have been number one, Georgia, yeah. number two, Michigan, number three, Clemson, number four, Utah. They are correct. And the top four conference champions get buys. Yes. Okay. No, they, they, they are correct. Okay. I didn't uh, know that. Correct. the I knew that the top six conference champions um, got auto bids. I didn't know that that auto bid affected the oh, seating as this well. This would favor Ohio State so much. They so went NFL year, so, parody. Yeah. I, I, so by, by year, the way, I disagree with this system if that's, if this is how they're doing it, which apparently it is. So in this system, it would be Tulane versus TCU. TCU would destroy. Um, Ohio oh, State. Hold on. Ta Austin, Austin makes the perfect point here. Yeah. They get Tulane, then Clemson. That's 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 the fucky part of it. Um, well, according to the one Kyle posted, Tulane would play TCU, then Utah. Um, <clears throat> Ohio State, Penn State would get a rematch, so that's fun. Yeah, Ohio State versus Penn State, and then would play Clemson, and then Alabama and USC. Which I think could have that could have been a, an interesting yeah, game. To I don't. Watch. I would have watched it. Yeah, and then the winner of that would play Michigan, and uh, Tennessee versus Kansas State. Winner of that would play Georgia. Ohio State would have to beat Penn State, then beat Clemson, and then face whoever. Wow. See this now. Now, now we're doing bracketology. We have. The uh, upper right division is easily the toughest division. Bama, yeah. USC, and Michigan. The bottom right division ain't are, aren't, aren't slouches. Clemson, Ohio State, and Penn that, State. That but that top, left. the bottom that left bottom is easily the weakest. <laughs> yeah. See, this is the problem. This is why they can't do the seeding. The bottom left division, we'll call it the Southwest. The Southwest division gets Utah, TCU and Tulane. That is easily, easily the weakest bracket. Uh, top the the Northwest has Tennessee and Kansas State. I'd watch that, especially without Hendon Hooker. I'd watch that game. The winner plays Georgia. They'd lose. Georgia would win. The the problem is you have easily. One bracket carrying most of the weight here with Bama, USC, and Michigan. This is why I don't, I don't you cannot, be you, but, but, but this is why you cannot favor conference champions in seeding. Because even in the NFL, 
they wouldn't use a bracket system. In the NFL, the lower seed would play the higher seed, which this the way that this bracket's being displayed to me does not suggest that's what's happening. Uh, by the way, Utah is no joke. Yeah, but they're the heavyweight in that division. Well, TCU, I guess, is, but still. How do we distinguish that, Jared? By seeding. There's no seeding. They have already said that. Yes, there is. Oh, reseeding, reseeding, sorry. Um, yeah, that's the problem. They should reseed, which is what the NFL has always done. In the NFL, the worst seeded team would play the best seeded team. Which is why, which is why seeding, reseeding is a more fair process Agreed. than the like strict bracket style. Bracket style. Um, th this is not the way it should be done. Kind of tough for college, I think. No, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It's you. You have a specific set of numbers by the, forcing forcing conference champions as seeds is the problem here i'll say it does the fcs reseed that is a great question i don't know the answer to it i that is a great question or does division two does division three i don't know i don't know the answer to that I know they do the rank. Yeah, I mean, every, I mean, literally every playoff has seeds. Literally every playoff has seeds. Um, the question is, do you stick to a strict bracket the way like the NCAA tournament does? Or do you reseed as you go the way the NFL does? Does the, MB the NBA reseeds as well, do they not? It's not an auto bracket in the NBA. It's lowest seed versus highest seed. They do not. There you go. I guess maybe one's the college standard and one is the good stuff. I'll catch you. I'll catch the rest later. Got to go. Uh, we're almost done. You, you won't miss much. Um, yeah, I maybe it's just the pros reseed and college doesn't, which is dumb to me. I understand why the NCAA basketball tournament does not reseed because filling out the brackets is... No, the NBA doesn't reseed. Interesting. I believe in reseeding. If you're the best team, that that is how you keep. Only reseeding is in the NFL, but that's it's the way it should be done. It is the way it should be done. I'm not saying it isn't. I know you're not. If you are, and I'm, I'm with you, by the way, if you're one of these people, and once again, I'm one of you who says the bigger playoff ruins the fact that the regular season in college football is so goddamn important. If you're one of those people and I I'm with you, then you should be a reseeder along with me. Because your ranking at the end should mean more than just the initial bracket. So reseeding makes sense. NFL creates parity through the draft, so reseeding makes sense. Mm -hmm. The NCAA, uh, NCAA football is creating parity through the transfer portal. Whether that was the intent or not, that is what's happening. You have free agency but i mean and again i could be wrong we don't have we do not have enough of a sample size to say this for sure yet you're going to see a lot more this year i've said this all season i was saying it today during we all got together did a social screen for the playoff reveal none of these teams none of these teams that are in the playoffs are all that great. 
None of these teams could beat Ohio State in 2014. None of these teams could beat Joe Burrow's LSU. None of these teams are all that great. We are moving towards more parity in college football because of the transfer portal. 100% more parity in college football because of the transfer portal. All right, Jared. I, I think I think that should be right about it here. Um, coming up on on the time here. Uh, any anything else before we wrap it up? Kyle, your general feeling. What's that? How much of a chance percentage wise does Ohio State have against Georgia? I'm going to say I'll say like 40%. I think 40 is a total fair, totally fair number. I agree. I, I think if this I mean, was I mean, a if this was an you, NBA you, style best of seven, I think this goes to seven games, but Georgia wins it. But it's one game. Yeah, but, but, but you can you can probably convince me to go lower just because of the end of the season that Ohio State had. It, they weren't the same from what we saw in the beginning of the year. Maybe that's health. Yeah. But but well, I, I think that's very important what you say, Kyle. Are we talking about Ohio State in October or Ohio State in November? Because those were two different teams. Mm hmm. And hopefully it's just a matter of getting healthy to get October Ohio state back. Yep. Because we want October, September Ohio state back. Yeah. But we last Ohio state we saw was November Ohio state. Let's hope December is a lot closer to October than it was November. If you follow my meaning. If first half Ohio State against Michigan shows up 50-50, if second half Ohio State shows up against, yeah, lest we forget that uh, Georgia almost lost to Missouri and Kent State and a couple other teams. Um, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, there's absolutely a chance. Georgia is not heads and tails better than Ohio State, but Georgia is better than Ohio State, at least the Ohio State we saw in November. If we get November's Ohio State, we're going to lose. Good October's Ohio State. October Ohio State could play against anybody in the country. Anybody in the country. Absolutely in court, including Georgia. Got to bounce. Yeah, we're 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 leaving too. We're leaving too. Um, Kyle, what are your odds for Michigan and TCU? I'm thinking Michigan 70%, TCU 30%. That's exactly my my percentage, I would think, is seventy percent. Yeah, uh, that's about right. Kyle, how bad do you want Georgia to win if they play Michigan in a national title game? A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Kyle, why, um, why ask I, that question? Because it felt like I needed a follow up. I do have one more question. One hundred and one percent. That's not mathematically possible, Stuart. Um, are you are you going to keep that bulldog above your head during the rest of the month? It's that's not Georgia. I know it's not Georgia. We still have a bulldog above your head. Doesn't matter. It's not Georgia. Okay. Okay. Just just had to ask. I had to ask. I didn't All have right. to ask, but I did. <laughs> Stuart's telling you to get rid of it. <laughs> if for anyone who doesn't know, Kyle's high school uh, were the Bulldogs. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, we, already, we already did the merch plug. If you're watching this on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, know that we have our own YouTube channel. Uh, and you can also watch stuff over there. Um, if you are like, oh, Jared, I watch Jared and Kyle, we watch when we can, but like, sometimes I don't always I have an hour to sit down and watch a full podcast on YouTube. There is an audio version of this podcast. If you don't know that, and by the way, if you're listening to the audio version of this and you don't know, there's a YouTube version of this, there is, <laughs> um, so 
yeah, uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com is our personal YouTube channel. Um, and you can find the audio version in any of your podcast apps of choice. You can go to apple.thesloopcast.com or spotify.thesloopcast.com or just go into whatever your your favorite podcast app is and search The Sloopcast. You'll find us. I promise. Um, join the Discord server. We did, Kyle. We did three social screens this week. We all got together and what? watched content together as a Discord community three times this week. USC, Utah, Ohio State, Duke, and we did the uh, playoff reveal. And by the way, it was fun each time. You two can be a part of this. Uh, just go to discord.thesloopcast.com and uh, join Discord and, and sign up. You'll have fun, I promise. Um, if you want access to the exclusive portions of that Discord server, and by the way, like most of it's free. Most of the Discord servers, server is free. But there are some exclusive member-only channels. Um, also, even without Jared, the World Cup match. Oh, that's right. You guys did that one without me. Doesn't count. I wasn't there. Sorry, I'm the most important person. Um, the... <laughs> I don't even like soccer and I watch. Well, you're American, aren't you? You're a goddamn American. I still watch the game. I just didn't join the Discord server. Um, soccer. No, it doesn't. Soccer is amazing. What was I saying? Uh, and then, yeah, uh, the join the premium sections of the Discord server. Uh, you can go to our Patreon uh, and it's seriously only three dollars a month. Three dollars a month. That is you probably lose more change out of your pocket than that. And if you're like, ah, oh, Jared, I just really don't want another monthly bill, even if it's only three dollars a month. It's a cup of coffee. No, the fuck it isn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah, maybe it's a small cup of coffee. It's a beer, not the beer I drink. I don't drink coffee. I make my own coffee. So honestly, I don't know. Just, just by the way, if you do a whole year up front, it's only like $32 and I want to say 50 cents, something like that. It's not much money. Um, and you just get the whole year up front doing that. 32 56 or something. Austin, you don't know you, you signed up because you're a good patron to a higher tier. How would you know? Thank you, Austin, for signing up at a higher tier. You can sign up at the higher tiers if you want to, but you don't have to. You you, you don't get a whole. I'm I'm just. I checked the other month for your stupid ass. That's because you're a good patron. See, I'm just going to keep throwing compliments at you, even though you called me a stupid ass. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, you also get an exclusive podcast feed that doesn't have all the annoying Spreaker commercials that interrupt the podcast. So you can get an ad-free experience on your audio only version. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? <laughs> Love you too, Austin. Uh, we'll just talk about the Buckeye basketball real quick here. I did have that loss to Duke um, last week, but then bounced back and got a, um, a big win. Well, not big, but um, a huge lead over uh, St. Francis, 96 to 59. And I believe the next games that they have, I think it's against Rutgers. Yeah, I believe it's Rutgers that they play, um, that they play next here. I'm just, just verifying real quick. Yep, they play Rutgers this Thursday, 7 p.m. And then they have a week off where they will take on UNC. In, in Madison Square Garden. Yes, Rutgers did beat Indiana. Yes, they did. Yes, sir. And that's it, Jared. That's it. Um, Tonight's ending music, since Kyle said that's it, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Fields and Plains. That is Fields and Plains. Uh, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer Justin Fields and Plains. I, you, you made me stop for that. I want you to really stop and think about how you made me stop the podcast to read that.
It was quality. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't. If you, I knew you would. Well, fair. So tonight's ending music brought to you by Fields and Plains, a Columbus based band. Uh, they'll be ending our show today. It's predictable, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Fields and Plains. Thank you.